Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I don't normally do three videos in a day, but today is different. And that's because I had to release this video. I'm going to call it the Nary Off Tapes. He's got secret recordings of Vitalik Buterin. He, I was just recording Stephen Nary Off in a Twitter Spaces, and he went on and, and laid out in his own words, what he's about, the, the bombs he's about to drop. So here's what I'm doing. I'm releasing the video of the spaces he did on um, uh, just the, of the part where he lays it all out. But then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let uh, ha my YouTube audience listen to half of it. If you want to hear the second half of it, uh, you go to my group at DAIXRP.com DAI um, and, and you can hear the second half of it. All of it is a freaking gold mine. You're not going to believe what this guy says. All right, thanks for listening. Yeah, I mean, I think what uh, what the SEC is doing is they, they're fighting these cases. But what you have is this legislation that has no safe harbor that's actually codifying this absurd, you know, morphing of into decentralization, and they're putting that into the legislation. So what they're fighting for in the courts. They're actually backdooring in the legislation and they're going to have the ability to just, you know, he becomes the king and he says, you're a security, you're not. Well, he's going to basically say everything's a security right? and, he'll, and it'll be codified. And like nobody's kind of really paying attention to that. And, you know, Loomis is like, uh, with all due respect to her, she seems like she's, you know, uh, a friend to the industry. But the legislation Who? who's a friend to the industry? Friend. Who are you talking about? Uh, so, Senator Loomis, I'm saying, in other words, oh, okay. in terms of sponsoring the bill, look, you know. Oh, yeah, there's the, that, that, that new bill. That, yeah, that, that new bill, I, I read it in the agenda. Um, Scott, did you see that bill that, uh, that Stephen is referring to? Hold on, wait. You've got Stephen, you've got Stephen or IFS. Stephen, now we've got you in our net. So you, you, there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide to anymore. I, I, I've been reading a lot of articles um, that you've been uh, talking about Ethereum. Not the articles have been pretty vague. Is there anything we should know about? <laughs> yeah, we've um, seen you. We've seen uh, you so praising, so praising we're, we're, Ethereum and, and uh, we're, we're and, switching uh, topics. Um, uh, first of all, let me be clear. I'm not the, the the articles may say what they say in terms of Ethereum. Is this is not a conversation about me and Ethereum, the protocol, right? So uh, I'm not anti-Ethereum. You know, I put my heart, blood, sweat, and tears into Ethereum, and I think everybody knows the contributions I've made to that. It's about specific people. Um, and if you have questions about that, I can answer that. You know, that we're yeah, leading me, Ethereum. Me. Yeah, tell me, tell me. So, Mario, last time on the spaces, you were asking a very good question. You were asking about, you know, when did they, uh, Vitalik and Joe, when did they start distancing themselves from me? And when did they start discrediting my role? And the, the answer to that question was like mid-2017. And then when I got prosecuted, for everybody who doesn't know, we proved that there was multiple agencies that fabricated a crime to prosecute me. That was late 2019. So that was two and a half years before that. Um, now, you're asking why. Uh, I want to make sure because I know everybody knows the whole story. So, and, you know, why imagine, ask? imagine they, imagine they don't. So maybe answer it in a way that kind of sums up the story briefly for people that don't know. So I was involved in the very early days of Ethereum, um, uh, from like literally the very first month. My I created the utility token and the ICO for Ethereum, um, and then I also, and that was in 2014, and then in 2015. Um, I, Vitalik called me and we're actually, everybody should know, we're going to be dropping this. Um, it was a three hour conversation with, a, he had, it was, they were going under. So he asked me to restructure the entire Ethereum foundation to save it. 
and I've got the whole thing recorded. I'm going to drop it. We're doing it as an NFT. It's free, you know, but everybody can have it. So when are you when are you like, when are you dropping it? Very brief. When are you dropping it, Stephen? Um, in like the next four or five days. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, Funk Master Flex, no, Nick's tape in the 90s. Let's carry on the story. Let's carry on the story. Because I, I think this is yeah, a very, and I think very, it's very gonna wake up, story. I think it's going to wake up a lot of people in terms of, you know, like, this is not about, a, you know, like, this isn't a personal thing, right? Um, but it's, it's going to wake up a lot of people in terms of, you know, what really happened back there. Like, people can make their own decision. I've got it recorded. Right. And so you can see, like, what did Vitalik, what did he know, what did Joe know? And, you know, so it's a it's a kind of a piece of history, but it'll also give you some perspective on what was really happening back then. Now you can fast forward and now I'm going to just uh, flat out say, you know, there was, you know, a lot of people have heard about this ETH gate where there's, uh, you know, ETH got this free pass from the SEC, where the SEC came up with this uh, argument that it actually took my utility token argument and somehow concocted it into something was a security and it's no longer a security because it's decentralized now. And that's what Heyman gave a speech for. So is everybody familiar with that? Yeah, that's the, yeah, the Heyman speech, speech I think people are aware of, yeah. Speech, yeah. Yeah, that's well, so I'm going to... That's a speech where Hinman basically said that ETH wasn't a security because it's decentralized, and that's what Ripple was acting to the Hinman speech and said, you know, if ETH not a security, why is Ripple a security? Or XRP a security, sorry. Right, so um, I'm going to make the... the I'm going to be very blunt. Uh, I will show the evidence on what I'm about to say. For legal reasons, I can't tell you exactly what it is but i will show it to you it's 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 like weeks it's not it's not months um a, and number one ethereum itself did not believe it was decentralized when that speech was given nor was it decentralized nor could joe or vitalik have believed it was because there's internal documents that indicate otherwise. And the only person that understood and had access to those documents and understood that was me. And if you follow the fabrication of the crime against me, which I proved from the government's own documents, it was the SEC was leading it, the FBI, the DOJ, everybody in this industry should care about what happened because they weren't only after me, they were after, you know, well, everybody who's a speaker on here pretty much was on, on a list. They wanted everybody. I mean, I told Rand at the time, and I know I sounded like a crazy person, but it's true. Um, <clears throat> they were looking to get as many people in this industry as possible. Um, and that all started at the very same time, coincidentally, when Hinman got to the SEC and the people that were leading the charge at the SEC was Hinman and my prosecution. So, Stephen, just, I, I just want to uh, hone the discussion in a little bit. So your, your, this bombshell that's about to drop, are, is this all around the fact that they knew that Ethereum wasn't decentralized while Hinman said that it was 